Hi, this is Stephen Gregg, and today I'm talking about the mindset of a trailblazer. I'm telling my story, and I've been telling my story for a while now, and it's been pretty awesome. I'm um, just being able to get this information out and, and get it out of my out of my heart. And so, the last message I kind of shared my conversion story of how um, I was baptized for the forgiveness of my sin on October 17th, 1999, um, and that was the day I received the Holy Spirit and, and was um, baptized and born again um, and added to the body of Christ. Um, it was an amazing journey that happened and God used some people in an amazing way to make that happen. So now I want to tell you what happened after that because that means I'm now a new creation. And so me being a new creation, you know, it was an amazing thing. I went to, to this church here in Orange County, but they're a worldwide church, you know, all around the world. And I spent time there and, you know, it was pretty awesome because um, after I made the decision to um, become a disciple, um, it was really fun because I was able to hang out with people and hang out with girls and boys and friends and, and you know, it was just a lot of people and not have to think about all the stuff I did in the world. Not have to go out there and be trying to be you know, impressive or trying to impress anybody or, or try to you know, date anyone or anything like that. I could just go there and just be free. It was just clean fun. And that was really cool, but uh, I remember there was one thing that I did that time um, when we were in the singles. Uh, we decided to have a, um, we went on a, a camping trip. And I had never been camping before, so we decided to go to Big Sur, up, up by San Francisco area, or San Jose area. And we were going there, and we went, and I brought along, you know, a lot of stuff with me. I brought a flotation mattress, because, you know, I didn't never want to sleep on the ground, so I brought a flotation mattress with me. And I also brought two suitcases rolling suitcases because this was my mindset remember i just came out of the world so i'm thinking okay we go to the, the the out there in the woods at night i mean during the daytime and then at night we go to the club so i brought suits i brought dress shoes and all kinds of stuff it was crazy i probably bought like five outfits because we were going to be there three or four days so i brought all these outfits to go to the gym i brought outfits to go to the nightclub and i brought outfits to be out there um in the camping bed. <laughs> It was crazy, so I come wheeling my, my um, luggage up to the thing and they thought I was nuts, man. It was, it was insane. But anyway, um, so we get there and we're having fun and we did something pretty interesting. It was a unique situation. We decided that we were going to do something pretty much illegal, it was stupid. They had this tree on this really long little skinny road. So this tree was way out there in the middle and it was about a 400 foot drop down to the ground, down to the water area. And so we decided to climb this fence that, you know, was there for a reason. And we decided to climb this fence and go off on this ledge so we can go take a picture. You know, we wanted to take some nice photos of us on this tree. So we did. So we took, went over there. Um, we were all gathered up. There was a, probably 10 of us or so. And we we're all standing there. And this was an interesting thing because they were asking us to kind of pose, right? And so we're, now you got to remember this tree is on this little bitty ledge. And down the ledge is 400 foot drop. There's no railing because you're not supposed to be there. So we're on this thing. And I remember very vividly this girl named Robin. She was next to me and she was posing up. And so they were asking us to scooch in. So she was backing up slowly but surely. So now I'm right next to the edge of the thing, holding onto the wall. But she's backing up to my right. And her foot was halfway hanging off the cliff. And she didn't know it. And so I didn't say anything. I just kind of grabbed her by the back of her back and just kind of slid her up to take the picture. And then I pushed her forward and she went on and, and we went home. And, you know, it was interesting because I kind of, that was the way I looked at it. Like I kind of saved my first person. That was the first person I saved because surely if she would have taken one more inch step back, she would have surely fallen 400 feet down to her death. And, you know, the funny thing is she didn't even know it. She never knew that happened until 10 years later because I never told her about it. Um, but then when I told her, she kind of freaked out a little bit, but it was really cool. But bottom line is, you never know when, you know, that type of situation is going to happen. You never know when you're going to be put in a situation where you're that close to death. And so that was a really encouraging thing. And then, you know, after that, you know, being in the singles, we used to have fight parties at my house. And we used to go out hanging out and we used to go to dances at the church because this church was big. And it was all these singles. And it was such an amazing, amazing time in my life. Um, and, you know, I was infatuated with this one girl named Susan and I was trying to go after her and I was trying to date her and trying to get to know her and stuff. And. Um, she wasn't giving me the time of day. And I remember one time we went to this singles retreat down in San Diego. And we were out there, you know, I had, you know, went there because I wanted to, you know, get closer to her, get to know her a little bit. And she wasn't thinking about me. She she was ignoring me and it was, it was pretty sad. And so I started getting really down and discouraged again because, you know, I had those emotions from my last relationship still. 
And I started getting down and discouraged, so I kind of went away from everybody. And what did I do? I went and got some beer, beer again, and I got another 40 ounce of beer and started drinking it. And, you know, I'm sitting there, and this is as a disciple. And then, you know, it's kind of cool how God works, because this one girl came over to me, and she was um, leading in the singles also. Her name was um, Jamie. And she came over to the rescue. She was like a superwoman, a wonder woman coming over to me. And she started befriending me and talking to me and, you know, encouraging me to come back to hang out with the rest of the people. And I did. And so I came, you know, came over. And so Super Jamie to the rescue, she came and um, kind of rescued me from that situation, from that mindset. So she befriended me and we became good friends. And, um, you know, I was really inspired by her because of her love for God, for her character and her integrity towards God and everything and she was a great leader at the time and so we just started becoming good friends and we started you know exercising together and just talking and becoming good friends and the next thing you know we started dating and you know we dated for a few months and after a few months of dating you know for some reason in my heart I just said you know this is the one I believe she's the one so I yeah after I asked her to be my girlfriend and three months later I went and we went to Indiana and met her parents and so when I met her parents I asked her parents if, you know, she would give me her hand in marriage, the, the, her dad. And she said, and he said yes. And so it was really cool. It was such an ins inspiring thing because I had never experienced any, anything like that. Now remember, I'm only, you know, less than one year being a disciple. So I was still a baby disciple. But, you know, finally I found this woman that I believed I, I could, you know, spend the rest of my life with. And so the cool thing about our church at the time, we had a, what's called a pure dating relationship. So we used to not kiss or anything at the time, and we were just having a great, pure relationship. And that lasted, you know, a period of time. Until the thing I realized is I, I kind of brought me to the picture. You know, I was a very sinful man, like I've talked about in the past, and I had dated a lot of girls in the world, and because of that, I brought me to the picture. And what ended up happening is I led Jamie into impurity. No, you know, and we were had an impure relationship, and we confessed it and got open with the sisters and the brothers that were discipling us at the time. But evidently, we did it again and fell impure again. And um, and then it was time. I remember this so vividly. It was time for us to get married because three months later we we're going to get married. All our family had bought tickets that we had already had the wedding thing, and we had set it up, and we had spent a lot of money for the wedding and the honeymoon and everything. And everybody was coming. And I remember Josh. Peterson um, called me up one day and said, Stephen, because they used to do marriage counseling with me. They, they said, Stephen, let me ask you, um, how, how's you guys been doing in purity? And I said, I've been doing, we're doing great. I lied. <clears throat> I flat lied to him. And I remember that day, I was standing at the Ralph's and I was on a pay phone at the time and I said, we, I lied. You know, I said, we're doing good. And that was my last opportunity to tell the truth and I didn't. So, you know, we had an awesome wedding. Our wedding was amazing. We had over 200 people there. We recorded the entire wedding. We had friends there. And we had dancing until midnight. And, and then we went off into the sunset to our honeymoon. And one thing I learned is that, you know, God, you can't mock God. You know, God is going to humble you. And from this point on, um, you know, that was the last day of a nice, comfortable <laughs> relationship. Um, with my with my newly found wife because from that day on God humbled our marriage in a way that is hard to explain and, and I will explain on the next video I'll share with you what he did um, for us I don't ever say God does anything to me I say he does it for me because he allowed me to grow from it and who I am today because of what we did but I can tell you right now um, I'm, I look back in hindsight is 2020 uh, if I would have done it all over again, I would have kept that pure relationship pure um, instead of being impure like I was. And most importantly, I would have confessed when I sinned because that confession would have allowed me to, to be freed again and I would have confessed to God and confessed to man, then, you know, I could have been healed. And so I just wanted to share that with you. And on the next video, I will absolutely go into detail what happened at the honeymoon and after because it's an amazing thing what God did for us. And so, you know, if you like these videos, please subscribe to our channel. And, you know, you can go and subscribe there and, and watch the rest of the video. We have, I have every single day I'm trying to shoot another video. But this is um, a video that, you know, God put on my heart to really just let the world know um, about the mindset of a trailblazer. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. And I will talk to you soon. Have a great day.